Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video on the tropics. And so in this video, we're going to be talking about the latest on the tropics. We'll be looking at each of our systems that are present. And we will also take a look at what the GFS model is forecasting for next week. And we'll look at favorability across the basin. And so before I get into details... so let us kick start things with that disturbance highlighted in yellow so as you can see on the five day graphical tropical weather outlook from the national hurricane center there is a 10 percent chance of potential development of the system and actually this chance here has decreased because it was at 20 percent and now here we have it being at 10 percent so that means uh it's a little bit unlikely that we will have any tropical cyclone developing from this area of disturbed weather and so if there's going to be any development it is going to be very slow to happen and it is not going to be taking place anytime very soon you could say so it is possible that this could not make its way into the u.s which would be some good news because regardless of this uh achieving tropical storm status or not then if it's going to be making its way inland it's going to bring a lot of moisture which is going to induce rainfall and that can further lead to inundation in areas so the best case scenario would be that this curves out and not actually make its way in. So if it parallels the east coast or southeast coast of the US, that would be some really good news. And currently, other areas are being impacted by all the moisture that is present. So let's go on to the satellite imagery and see what's happening. Alright, so here we have it. And... We have quite a bit of moisture associated with this. It is extended in portions of the Caribbean. And so areas such as Hispaniola, uh, the Turks and Caicos Islands, Cuba, Jamaica, are likely to experience rainfall but here in Jamaica. There was quite a bit of rainfall, especially the eastern side of the island, and some areas were even inundated. So there was slight flooding in some areas, but there was nothing very major here fortunately but this is just something to be mindful of if you're in any of these areas that there is the potential for some significant rainfall when this moisture is going to be lingering around and so now let's go on to our tropical cyclones and so here we have tropical depression of victor victor is definitely dissipating on the cone forecast we really have nothing left so by this afternoon victor should become a remnant low and just be lingering out there but as of right now it has winds of around 30 miles per hour and, and is accelerating to the west northwest at 14 miles per hour and on sunlight we barely see anything left of the cyclone so it is certainly sheared and dissipating and so going on to hurricane sam so sam actually strengthened uh, as a result of the gulf stream and it now has winds of around 105 miles per hour and it is accelerating to the northeast at 30 miles per hour so it is going to be making its way continuously to the northeast and is going to be moving a little bit uh, erratic as it approaches just in between greenland and iceland right there so it should be composed tropical by tomorrow and then it should also weaken because of course it is increasing in latitude and once it does so cooler waters are going to be preventing any intensification because tropical cyclones need warmth and moisture so there will be none of that as the storm accelerates and so now let's go ahead and take a look at it on satellites and here we have it uh sam is definitely approaching extratropical status so we will gradually see the cyclone dissipating as time goes by but it has definitely lived quite alive it's strengthened to a category four and remains so for a very long time uh it had peak winds very close to being a category five and it is currently the strongest storm of the season its pressure was tied with uh ida which is 929 millibars and so ida was rated as the strongest of the season but due to sam being a bit stronger especially in terms of the winds then now sam is currently the holder of the strongest storm of the season and so now let's go ahead and take a look at current conditions that are persistent across the basin so let's go on to the saharan dust map and so whenever you see the light yellow shades that means that there isn't much dust but as you go to the orange the red the dust is very dense in those regions and that prevents tropical development because it is dry air which inhibits moisture and that is what our tropical cyclones need so without moisture we won't have development and so here we have uh, that pocket of saharan dust that i've been talking about for about the last two days uh here we have it 
being over sections of the Eastern Caribbean, so the Lesser Antilles, the Virgin Islands, probably sections of Puerto Rico, are probably experiencing hazy skies right now as a result of this dry air. And remember that, that whenever the dust is very dense and moving across your region, this could trigger allergies, uh, this can cause skin irritation, so it's best to stay indoors and stay somewhere that is cool. So this pocket of dry air could continuously make its way a bit westward and it could affect other sections of the Caribbean such as the Greater Antilles. Uh, we do have some being uh, just off the coast of Florida right there and the southeastern US. So all this moisture associated with the disturbance is going to be making its way into even more hostile conditions when it encounters the Saharan dust. So it is not really likely that we will have development of that system. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the wind shear. And so we're seeing here that we have the different colors that indicate the favorability of the shear. We have the green that means favorable, the yellow means neutral, and the red means unfavorable. So we're seeing that we have quite a bit of unfavorable shear extending across most regions, but we do have that small area of some favorable shear ahead of the disturbance. But again, it is going to be encountering some of that dry air that is in that region. So it is not very likely that we will have development of that disturbance and so guys finally let's go ahead and take a look at what the gfs model is forecasting for next week so i saw something that is very interesting here but it is important to know that when we have our models making predictions nothing is guaranteed to take place it is just a forecast so we have to really wait and see what's going to be the eventual outcome and things tend to change a lot especially within just about five days of a prediction beyond that point things are not usually very accurate so we have to wait and see but let's just look at what the model is forecasting and so this is a map showing the isobars and the isobars are lines of equal pressure and when you see them being in a circular manner with the pressure below 10 13 millibars that's a low pressure system and can be or tropical cyclone so that's what we're looking for here so this is by Wednesday the 13th of October and in the Eastern Caribbean it is showing something a little interesting a 1007 millibar low pressure system and there is quite a bit of moisture associated with it so let's go out further to October 14th and here we have GFS showing a 993 millibar low pressure system just over the Virgin Islands so this is quite interesting here but as I said things tend to change a lot uh, with this pressure we have a tropical storm and as we go on to Friday the 15th of October here we have GFS showing a 980 millibar low pressure system that pressure is lower than 993 which indicates that the system is intensifying and GFS is showing it being pulled away from the islands and so this is somewhat of a rare track so we really have to wait and see what's going to be happening as we're going to be heading throughout the rest of this week and going into next week and remember nothing is ever guaranteed and so guys that is really it for this updated video on the tropics and so if you found it to be quite informative please give a thumbs up and you can also share your thoughts with me in the comments or ask a question i will try to respond as best and as soon as i can and just remember to always be weather wise and i will keep you updated as time goes by